Blog Talk Radio. Well, interesting day. Lots of technical difficulties. Seems Blog Talk Radio is kicking up some errors. Hey, I don't want to talk about Blog Talk Radio. And today the big story is Antonio Beeler. Well, last night he got himself into a little bit of a jam. I'm not too sure he got himself into it. Maybe walked into it is a better word. See, if you guys aren't familiar with Antonio Beeler, he's the uh, founder of the Peaceful Streets Project. And back in New Year's, on New Year's Eve, he saw something wrong in his society and he stood up. Well, it's been a lot of trouble since then because the police seem to be manhandling some fellow human beings. Well, they didn't like that fact that he got involved. He stood up for somebody that uh, needed help. Well, it's been a long story, but he assembled a group of people that are out dealing with police accountability. Accountability in the, um, is being used or facilitated by the use of cameras and watching police incidents and interactions with the local population. Uh, you'd think that the police wouldn't have a problem with an independent uh, observer, somebody just watching the scene. But it seems like that is not the case. That is not the case. They seem hostile to the fact that somebody is recording them doing their job. And I guess I'd be a little bit hostile, too, if I thought I was doing something wrong. Austin PD, are you doing something wrong? Well, eh, yeah, you're doing something wrong. You got Antonio Beeler in jail. So today is uh, August 26th. This story went live around August 25th when Antonio Beeler and Joshua Panetta were out patrolling the streets of Austin. They came across a an incident. Uh, from what I hear, it's a, uh, a a fight between a male and a female. Abuse case, you know. Who knows? You know, information isn't available to the public for quite some time, and perhaps it's spun. Who knows? Well, Antonio Beeler did what he normally does, and you sit there and you pop open your camera and you start filming. Well, from all reports that I've seen, he was about 30 feet away. Nice, safe distance. It was probably a hostile situation because those situations are usually violent. If you come across a, you know, one person beating on the other, be it male or female, there are some emotions going on there. Well, the police, from reported accounts, you know, the video is forthcoming, as I say. This is a live event. Well, the police asked the, um, what's that word? Not the victim, the perpetrator, the alleged perpetrator of this case of violence. I believe it's the male was beating on a female. If Antonio was bothering him and then proceeded to arrest Antonio. So Antonio ends up going to jail. Well, the network popped into, you know, into work to try to help Antonio. A lot of stuff was done, but, you know, it came live in the middle of the night. So the real traction didn't hit until this morning. Now, what traction are you talking about, you might ask? Well, kind of the way things work nowadays is somebody gets in trouble and then people that care about them will actually um, jump in and try to help. Uh, so as we hear Antonio's in jail, we know we want to get him out of jail. Ever hear of a website emergency? I never heard of one myself. If you want to go over to my web page, I've put up a few links, you know, the number to the chief of police's um, phone number, and, you know, the main jail line, and, you know, the main jail line and a lot of different phone numbers are offline. 
imagine that. I think they're down for service. Well, maybe it's a fluke. Things do point to a setup, but I can't say that they are a setup. I don't know that. But I do know there was a suspicious uh, piece of information released by the uh, corporate news service out there in, in Austin that hailed peaceful streets for being on you know, the streets trying to help protect you. And in the back end of that little short clip, there was a knife that went into Antonio's back saying that the police have been aware of his activities and they're looking into them. Why would they care? What has a camera got to do with anything? A camera is independent. Now, I was just informed that there is a video going to be available here in a few minutes. It's being uploaded. So my timing on this is, you know, perfect. You're going to have to see the video. We'll be able to see this. The interesting part is watching the network come together. Now, when I say network, it's not really a bunch of people um, that are officially connected to anybody. We may all subscribe to freedom and transparency, but there's no affiliation here except for our belief in you know, freedom and liberty. And we see Antonio as a person that's fighting for just that. You can help. If you're listening to this or you listen to this in the future, you can call the, the chief of police in Austin. His phone number is 512-974-5030. Ask him about the Antonio Beeler case and tell him to free him. Is filming police illegal? No. It's covered in a multitude of laws and you know, it's even covered in your Constitution. <laughs> that's pretty funny, huh? Do they follow the Constitution? Oh, that's a good question. But that aside, Antonio Beeler sits in jail, and the main phone numbers to the jail are offline. You call one of those up. I'll give you that number just for kicks and giggles. You can call that up. It's 512 eight five four five two four five you can tell them let Antonio go if you actually get a hold of them I guess you're probably just gonna get dropped you'll dial the phone and get dropped but that's no reason not to call calling is important and don't be afraid of that you gotta stand up for your rights and if you think you're standing up for Antonio Beeler you're wrong you're standing up for yourself because one of us falls, and especially one of us that's so high profile like Antonio Beeler, we're all deprecated. We're all diminished in some respect. They're testing him right now. Hey, I got a caller on the line. Let me see who's on the line. Hold on a second. Oh, hey, we got somebody from Austin on the line. Hey, how's it going? This is Ryan Mallett here from uh, Peaceful Streets Project. Hey, Ryan. Well, welcome to FBG Live. Um, so tell me, what do you know about the Antonio Beeler case so far, or at least this current arrest? Uh, well, last night, um, I don't know if you know about this or not, but the uh, Texas Accountability Group uh, gave Antonio an award for uh, Activist of the Year um, directly after we left that, uh, that meeting slash uh, party, celebration, whatever you want to call it. Um, we went downtown. We had about uh, seven people, and we split off into two groups and started, um, you know, doing our rounds. Uh, about, I was uh, on the east side of Austin, um, and then we met up with, uh, with them on 6th Street. Um, at around 2 o'clock, right after last call, um, a gentleman and his, I wouldn't want to call him a gentleman, I guess, considering what happened, but a man and his uh, fiance, I believe, um, got into an argument, and he ended up throwing her to the ground. Um, Antonio and um, another one of our activists, uh, Janice, uh, happened to be extremely close to the scene, so they started videotaping, and um, they started bleeding these folks down to the um, little substation that APD has set up at 6th and 35. Um, 
Antonio followed them all the way down there um, with Janice in tow. She was also recording. Uh, Antonio, in his typical style, was getting you know extremely up close and personal. Um, I'm not sure if he said anything. Janice, was he was he talking to them at all? Was, did he address the police officers before they they attempted to make contact with him? No. So um, they uh, basically just uh, turned around and told him to back off, and that if he didn't stop recording, he was going to be arrested. And uh, a couple of seconds after that, they had him spun around and uh, had cuffs slapped on him, and they told Janice that if she didn't stop, she was getting arrested too. So she stepped back, and uh, Antonio was carted off. And fortunately for him, he was you know right outside the door so that he didn't have to do the, the walk of shame down 6th Street in handcuffs. Um, but uh, wow. the official charge at this point is um, obstruction of official duty. And um, there hasn't been a bond set. Uh, he hasn't been uh, to see a magistrate yet, but his attorney, uh, the last we heard, was uh, en route to the Travis County Jail, where I imagine he'll have a, uh, a little powwow with him uh, on the other side of the glass. And uh, I guess they'll go from there. But um, it's my understanding that um, they have 24 hours to get him in front of a judge to get a magistrate and have a bond uh, set. But that's okay. where we sit right now. Okay, so this happened a little bit after 2 a.m. Now, let me clarify a couple points. Now, um, was Antonio and, you know, the rest of the people that were there actually a witness to this um, violence? Um, Janice, did you actually see the guy throw his, his girlfriend down? No. No. Um, the only thing that they caught on film was the, the police uh, speaking to the uh, alleged uh, assailant, well, the, uh, woman told it. and the the woman told uh, told our uh, peaceful street scientists what happened. Oh, really? On film? The victim. Um, what, did you get that on film? Uh, uh, Antonio got it on film. Um, Janice did not, um, but they did take Antonio's camera as soon as they arrested him. So we do not have that footage. What we do have footage of is. Uh, Antonio being arrested, which I'm in the process of uploading right now. It's kind of slow going because it's a big file. Okay, yeah, I saw that post as it was coming through. You know, good timing. How many cameras were running at the time? Did you, you probably have a variety of different angles and? Uh, uh, well, uh, Antonio had uh, at that time, um, right before he got arrested, he had uh, what was it? Four people with him, or three? Four, including him, I believe. He had. Okay, so there were four of them, and he told two of them to split off as they were following them uh, down to the substation. And as soon as those guys broke off, I think that's when the cops decided that they were going to take action because um, uh, I guess we didn't have our numbers there. But um, Man, how uh, crazy is that? You know, you get out of the tag thing, and, you know, that's Texas yeah. for accountable government, and then the police throw him in jail for exactly what the people of Texas are hailing him for. Yeah, wow. well, um, I think one of our acti activists might have uh, stirred the turret a little bit when he uh, took a picture of Antonio's award and uh, tweeted, uh, tweeted it to uh, Art Acevedo, the chief of police out here. So uh, I, think I think he would be proud of that. Out. I don't know. I know Art and him have a little bit of a history going. Art wants to paint things one way, and Antonio paints them a different way. But that oh, yeah. court case is still up in the air. And Yeah, um, he still hasn't gone to the grand jury. It's, it's still you know, getting kicked around. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how that turns out. So I guess um, Harold has set up a – there's a rally going on. Uh, do you know anything yeah. about that? Um, no, um, we stayed there until about 8.30 in the morning. Um, we originally um, had some problems because uh, we had uh, two of our activists have their purses and keys and wallets and everything locked up in Antonio's car. And uh, they told us when we got there at about 4 o'clock in the morning that we would have to wait till 8 to fill out a property release form. And then when we came back at 8 to fill the property, well, we never actually left, but when we went back to the window to ask for the property release form at 8, they told us that, they don't do property release on the weekends, so we had to call AAA out to come bust into Antonio's car to get their stuff out. Wow, that's crazy. Oh, yeah. my God. So, yeah, yeah, they're that's making kind it of as like, hard as possible. Yeah. Did you end up seeing that um, 
news clip from a couple of days ago where they talked about peaceful streets and then oh yeah, yeah the lion in. Uh, we actually got a hold of lion in this morning and uh, I spoke to uh, somebody that was on call and they said that uh, they knew that a producer one of the producers was going to be extremely interested in that and, and I do believe that they got in contact with uh, Joshua Pineda um, our, uh, our buddy comrade with uh, Peaceful Streets, and uh, he gave them the lowdown on that. So I would expect a, a story sometime today from them about this when they get all the details. Yeah, for those of you that don't know Comrade, he's been very instrumental in the Peaceful Streets, too. He's a really good guy. I've met him once. Um, so, um, so, yeah, so Harold's got uh, a bunch of people going down to the Travis County Jail right now. And so that's at 509 West 11th Avenue, or 11th. Is that Street or Avenue? Uh, it's Street. Oh. Um, okay, 11th the Street. Way to, the easiest way to get there is uh, yeah, either go down 11th or 10th Street, and it's the big building surrounded by cop cars. You can't miss it. <laughs> it should have quite a, a few people out there. Yeah, yeah. hopefully. Yeah, I hope so. And the, the crazy part is, we uh, I, I talked to pretty much everybody that was coming out of the jail. I passed out, you know, a few cigarettes, and you know, because they take away your tobacco products when they lock you up and throw them away. But um, the people that I spoke to said that they saw him, that they were there after he um, he was brought in and booked, and they went up to a magistrate, no problem. You know, DWI, public intoxication, aggravated assault, et cetera. They all went and got in front of a judge that night and were out this morning. Uh, meanwhile, Antonio is sitting in there in a cell and can't see a judge just because they don't like him. Mm. But that's speculation on my part. But yeah. yeah, well, <laughs> it's speculation on my part, too, but there is no such thing as fair and balanced in this world. Oh, that's but, true. <laughs> I don't know. Um, God, so where do we go from here? Um, I guess uh, I, I I have a feeling that Antonio is going to get out. I mean, he they have 24 hours to get him uh, a bond amount set, and then as soon as that happens, he'll be out. His attorney is on it. And I have a feeling when he gets out, if he um, managed to get any sleep in there, he's going to be hitting the ground running and going to be right back out there doing it. And uh, I fully support that. I'm I'm ready to hit the hit the streets again. <laughs> I'm sure you are, and you haven't even slept tonight, right? No, no, I'm thinking about taking a nap, but then I don't want to because I know I'm going to have to wake up later. <laughs> you ever think you'd have a YouTube emergency? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's quite crazy. I ended up having a show coming up today, and I'm like, oh, my God, I have to change this and that and this, and I should update the site. And That's a lot of work. It's, but it's important, and it's like an emergency, and I'm clicking on a computer for an emergency. To do what? To try to get one more person to help Antonio Beeler stand up for one more person? Because I don't know. Uh, I don't know what your take is. Everybody that I talk to about filming police, they're very for it. I've heard a couple people mentioned that they don't think that they should be interfering with police, but I don't see peaceful streets I, I, as interfering. No, no, we definitely don't. We don't, we don't engage them. Um, they, they engage us. I mean, we, we might get a little too close for their comfort level, but we're not doing anything illegal. And everybody has their, their own personal style when it comes to videotaping. Uh, personally, I like to keep something between me and them, like a car or you know, a, a fence or a wall or you know, small children or something like that. But um, Antonio <laughs> will, will get up in their face. Antonio yeah, will be on, on their butt, and um, he, he doesn't let up. He's, he's a pit bull. Yeah, and uh, sure. and all, really, this, the only thing that this is going to serve to do is piss him off further, and uh, it's just going to add fuel to the fire. But they know that, and... Um well, I, yeah, I'm pretty sure they're trying. They're trying to get him to do something stupid, something that they can really pin him, pin to him. But right now, what they're doing is, you know, they're just throwing <laughs> the wall and seeing what sticks. I'm sorry, I need to censor myself. I'm, I'm so okay. It's the internet. I'll bleep it oh, out yeah, for right. yeah, later right. use. <laughs> I'm used to calling up and messing with Dudley and Bob. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't so much uh, mind swearing, but. You know, for publicity's sake, I'll bleep things out like that, but let's not get worked up on that. There's enough violence yeah. going on out in the world to worry about words. 
The, right. um, but my take, you know, I've talked to a, a bunch of people about the Peaceful Streets Project, including, you know, Sheriff Richard Mack. I had him on a show a while back, and I also talked to Sheriff Jeffrey Christopher. And so there are law enforcement people that support what Peaceful Streets is doing. And I still can't get my mind around, and maybe that's just, I don't know, why would they think that this is a threat? You know, I see you performing a public service in the filming of these engagements to, you know, add evidence, if nothing else, or perhaps just keep everything in alignment. It adds them a tool for training. But they don't yeah. see it that way. Yeah, well, um, if, if in a perfect world it would be, well, I mean, you can't, I guess you can't even really go there when you talk about police, but um, <laughs> it's, it's just, it, it, there's just a, a huge us versus them mentality that uh, it's, it's just impossible to beat it. And um, the only way that you can legally do anything right now is, to, is just to videotape. I mean, you stand back and you document it. And hopefully, eventually, somebody will get something more than a two-week paid vacation. Right. Yeah, two weeks for doing your job wrong. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's kind but, of crazy. I mean, there's, there's not a whole lot that we can do at this point without, you know, inciting violence to, to cause, you know, change. But, you know, I don't know anybody that's prepared to go down that road right now. Um, right. Besides, violence to stop violence doesn't make sense. Right, fighting fire with fire, but, you know, that yeah. makes not as much you know, throwing somebody in jail for videotaping you. So, I mean, uh, this doesn't scare me at all. I mean, I've I've spent some time in jail before. It's it sucks, but um, as long as as long as we're doing the right thing, you know, they can they can lock me up forever. I'll keep doing it. Antonio feels the same way. I'm sure. I'm sure everybody on the Peaceful Streets team feels the same way. For sure, for sure. Well, and there's no such thing as bad publicity. Well, I, maybe That's there true. is. If he well, went all wacko and started whacking on people, that could do peaceful streets a lot of harm, but then that's not within his character either. Right, right. And Antonio, I mean, it's called peaceful streets for a reason. We actually had somebody get uh, try to get physical with me the other night, and uh, fortunately Antonio got the whole interaction on, on video, and the guy finally backed down when Antonio, you know, got in his face and told him that he had it all on, on video. So that wasn't a huge problem, but... We run into more people that are for what we're doing than, than against, but we do run into some people that are just com completely blind to what's happening right now. Yeah, when I talk about the peaceful streets and I talk about Harold's presentation at the um, police accountability uh, seminar, you know, a few months back, I believe it is now, um, I just remember his little diagrams of how cameras protect each other, you know, and... Yeah. Um, so what you just described was you filming and the person getting aggravated, maybe aggressive, and the deterrent was another camera. And then when that guy's awareness got to the point of, oh, shoot, uh, yeah, maybe I shouldn't be doing this. Um, yeah, that's great. It's weird when a camera becomes, uh, is it a weapon or a tool? Uh, I don't think it's a weapon because well, you're not I mean it, it can be, it can be, but I think we're trying to use it as a tool. I think we're trying to use it as the uh, as a flashlight, well, I, basically, shed some light. Yeah, on well, going. I guess people are ignorant okay. as to what actually happens to people when they deal with cops. Hmm. If they've Is never been beat up by a cop or, or falsely arrested by a cop, they have no idea about those types of people that have to go through that. They have no idea that that really happens to them. That's something that only happens in the movies. And if you end right. up in the back of the cop car, you probably did something to deserve it. There's a lot of people like that. And a lot of people will just say, yeah, well, I deserved it. And, you know, maybe they did, maybe they didn't. I think they didn't. I don't like that whole system. Let me go back oh, yeah. to that whole weapon versus tool thing. Now, is a shield a weapon or a tool or, you know, a defense? Is it a defensive weapon? Because... You know, you could use it to assault somebody, right? 
but yeah, mainly it's used for it's blocking. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe but, uh, I'm just I mean, we're not going to around here. beating people other cameras for sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, that would be quite silly, especially since you're peaceful. There's nothing about the peaceful streets that is violent. And that's one thing that I hope that they um, come to an understanding about it. Well, hey, man, um, I hope today goes well when you get a little bit of sleep. I do hope you get out there on the streets again just to say that you're still there. Um, oh, yeah, we're not going anywhere. No, I know you're not. I know Antonio's not. So... Well, no, thanks for joining us. <laughs> he is. Uh, thanks he for is. having me on, man. Thanks for, uh, thanks for getting done. Okay. Well, there you have it, guys. Pre Antonio. It's time. Take care. Let the man go through.